Good evening everyone and welcome back to SAC to the Future, week number 12. Um, is just getting started. Actually it started a few minutes ago on the Brian Feltz channel. You'll be able to see the Cowboys in action versus the LA Chargers. Uh, here of course we're going to have the Chicago Bears visiting the Philadelphia Eagles. Now in 1960 real life of course the Eagles were the champions of the league that year, so this should be a tough matchup. Bears coming off a very tough matchup last week where they survived the Detroit Lions in rather interesting fashion. Uh, so if you haven't checked that game out, it's definitely worth a watch. It's a long one though, as it did take a while to get past the Lions there. We look at the playoff picture, right now the Bears are the number one seed. The Eagles are currently the wild card, but you see they have the same record as the Lions, so the Eagles definitely need this one. As well as they're only one game behind the Giants for the division. Here's a look at Bill George. The Bears will kick to the Eagles. Week number 12. Of course, this is the NFL 2017 schedule. So this is the week that includes the Thanksgiving games. That's why you saw the Detroit game was already a final. And there's Norm Van Brocklin. 18 touchdowns, 6 interceptions, almost 70% completion rate on the season. Now the Eagles defense, even though they were the champions back in 1960, the Eagles defense should not be as much of a challenge as the Detroit Lions defense was. However, this Eagles offense, led by Norm Van Brocklin, should be quite a hard task to defeat. If you look at the offensive line, Billy Ray Barnes, Timmy Brown, the running backs, McDonald and Retzleff, the wide receivers. Now, if you've been following along, you'll know that I did play the Eagles with the Broncos earlier, and Retzloff uh, really tore my secondary apart. The Bears are a better defensive unit than the Broncos, so we'll see how they handle Retzloff. And there is that great defensive unit, Fred Williams, Doug Adkins, Bishop on the line. Bill George, the super linebacker. Fortunato's not too bad himself. Pettibone and Sumner are safeties. J.C. Caroline and Eric Barnes are very good corners. Third and eight. Looks like the Eagles will finally throw the ball. Oh. Tipped up in the air, almost complete, but luckily dropped. Playoff picture definitely taking form now. As I said, the Bears survived last week to get the 10 and 0. That was a big game had they lost. You saw the Lions won down there on Thanksgiving, so they're already. 8-3. Had the Lions been able to beat the Bears, they'd be at 9-2 and two right now, and the Bears would be 9-1. and one. So that was a huge, huge game for the Bears to win. Here comes Eddie Brown, 13 touchdowns, 11 interceptions, just over 1,500 yards. Bears are right around the middle of the pack offensively. Uh, number one defensively as far as points allowed. That was a nice block. 
And Caceres will get the first down. Last week, Caceres just 61 yards on 19 carries for, for the season. He's at 1176 with 11 touchdowns. The Lions did a great job against Caceres last week. But the give is to Caceres brought down fairly quickly. Uh oh. Campbell with the tackle, and it looks like Caceres is hurt. And that is not a good start. Well, somebody did take his helmet away from him. I don't know if maybe it's a. Concussion protocol situation back in 1960. <laughs> that might not have meant anything, but. Johnny Morris in the backfield now. And that's intercepted. Brookshire picks off Brown. Brown's been throwing way too many interceptions this year. Here's another one. Nice catch, actually. All right. The real-life champions definitely want this game. They want to stay in the uh, playoff hunt in the NFC. Van Brocklin comes out with a different strategy of just getting the Bears to jump off sides. Oh, okay, it's just a strain. Just a strain for Caceres. He should be able to return later this game. Oh, Doug Adkins gets rid of his blocker and slams throwing him back in the backfield. to the right side. Barnes now has four carries for one yard. Runs to the right, does a jump pass, but it doesn't work. And the Bears survive the interception. That kick is going to go... Uh, Dies inside the five. A very good kick. And the Bears will have to start back at their own four-yard line. Idiot. Morris gets kind of stuck. On the lineman, gets a yard. There is the line. Lee, Jones, on the left are the best part of the line. I guess they're not going to tell you that Gallimore is number 28, but that's who it is. And there's Gallimore right there on the interception, or on the reception for 13 yards. Right. 
There's a quick completion over to the tight end. A couple more yards. Now, of course, next year, 1961, the Bears will be drafting Mike Ditka, so you may see a few more receptions by a tight end next year. Morris makes a move around the safety, but gets tackled. A nice carry. First down up to the 40. Completion over to Harlan Hill. Brown, after that interception, has completed three in a row. Hill was great last week. 160 yards and two touchdowns. And he had uh, he really did nothing for three quarters. He had about, I think, maybe one reception and 30 yards or something like that, but really came alive in the fourth when they needed him. to Johnny Morris. And Gallimore in motion. They'll give it to him. And he takes a shot and loses a yard. Another hard hit. defense. Chuck Weber, Maxi Broad, Pellegrini, Don Burrows. You've already seen Brookshire get an interception. And there's a flag that's got to be pass interference or defensive holding. It is pass interference on the Eagles. And that'll give the Bears a first down. Johnny Morris breaks one tackle, runs into the crowd of people instead of going to the left where it was open, but does gain four yards. The corners are playing off a little bit. And Harlan hit Hill, Harlan Hill for a first down. What's this now? Now there's a strain on Jones. So the star running back and the star defensive lineman both get pectoral strains in the same quarter. Both uh, will be able to come back this game most likely, but out for a few plays at least. Gallimore gets a couple yards, and that'll do it for the first quarter. Scoreless first quarter. Reminds you. No, it doesn't. I was going to say it reminds you of the Eagles. Uh, Broncos game, but that's not true at all. The 
believe the Eagles were on fire in the first quarter against Denver. Again, the Bears are a more talented defense than the Broncos' defense is. There's Morris getting taken down in the backfield. Four carries, 18 yards. So the Bears are down their Hall of Fame left guard and their starting running back. But both appear to be able to return. Some point in this game, I'm hoping. Play action. Somebody needs to get open. And that's knocked away, almost intercepted. Brings up fourth and goal. And the Bears will have to attempt the field goal to get on the board. Right down the middle, Bears take a three to nothing lead. Chip shot for Avini. Would have rather had the touchdown, but at least the Bears are on the board first. So we won't have to play catch up like we did last week when the Lions jumped out to a 17 point lead. To the Packers and Steelers will play later. A couple semi pro teams will challenge each other as well. Detroit 35 13, no problem with the semi pro team from Minnesota. And that game's actually important. Atlanta at 2 7 and 1, hosting the Bucks at 3 and 7. They are both semi pro teams, but that entire division is all semi pro teams. Someone's got to win it. Probably the winner of that game. Look at this. Just run through a couple guys, carries them, knock extra four yards. That was a nice run by Barnes. Man, Van Brocklin has thrown his third straight incompletion. Adkins. That's the Doug Adkins we all know and love. Fleet of foot. Try to stay around the field. There's a handoff, and Bill George was all over it. Brings up fourth down and six. goes out of bounds so the Bears will come back on offense from their own 32 yard line. Morris four carries 18 yards he comes back as the running back so perhaps Caceres will sit the entire first half out. Let's see if we see him at all in the second half. Oh no sorry I don't know why the animation showed Morris coming back out. Caceres is going to start this series. I'll hand it to him. He'll break one tackle and then take a heck of a shot. He now has 17 yards on three carries. Total yards, Bears 91, Eagles 5. Gallimore gets just a yard. Brings up third and five. And there's Duval. Duval, sorry. Um, he's not the actor, he's more the receiver of the Chicago Bears. 
Very interesting strategy by the Eagles. Corner. He uh, decided just to let him go. Ah, tried to sneak it in between the linebacker and the defensive back, but the linebacker was able to get his hands on it and knock it down. Second and ten. The Bears have run 11 times, thrown nine times. Harris picks up just a couple, brings up a third and eight. And Caceres gets a couple of yards, but not enough of a surprise to get the first. Here's the punt going towards the end zone, and it is a touchback. That's not good. So the Eagles will come on offense again. The Bears defense has shut them down so far, but they only have a three-point lead. And there's Rhett's laugh. I knew you were going to hear from him sooner or later. Luckily, it was only nine yards and not an instant touchdown. Carries it across the line for a first. Seven carries, eight yards. Now again, uh, going on over on the Brian Feltz channel is the Cowboys and the Chargers. This is just the early beginnings of week 12. We'll also have uh, the Giants will be in action on the John M. channel. And then on both the John M. and the Twisted Phoenix channel, you will see the Colts and the Oilers. Of course, the Oilers, the other undefeated team in the league at 10-0. They did play the Colts once before and blew them out, but the Colts are playing better since that blowout. And uh, we're hoping for a much better game. We're also hoping the Bears can tackle that guy. Barnes is breaking a lot of tackles today. Still only 20 yards, but impressive at breaking tackles so far. Down below you see the Patriots who have lost at least three in a row. Lost themselves right out of any chance of a wild card. And now they're even losing to the semi-pro team. And there's the two-minute warning. Wow, the semi-pro teams are coming to life this week. The Carolina team is destroying the New York Titans 14-0. The Titans, of course, leading the AFC East at the moment. But they are getting spanked by the semi-pro team. The Patriots also from the East are getting demolished. Well, not demolished, but they are losing to their semi-pro opponent as well. So the semi-pro teams unleashing on the AFC East so in the early parts of these games. And there's a completion. And here comes the hurry-up offense. So 
completion to the back out of the backfield. That's enough for a first down. Oh, Van Brocklin in the hurry up. It's completion to the back and finally tackled. Oh, Van Brocklin getting everyone lined up. There's the snap. And dang it. Morse came up a little bit too far. Van Brocklin hit right over his head. Van Brocklin throws that into the ground. Five of nine, 41 yards. And there's a bobble and an incompletion. behind the receiver could have been intercepted but it's harmlessly falls to the ground and now the Eagles will try to tie it with a field goal and they do we are tied at three with 44 seconds left in the first half 21 to nothing the Carolina Panthers take the lead on the New York Titans. Duall gets it just across the 30 to the 31. And Brown will come out to see if he can get any points before the halftime break. There's a nice completion up to Harlan Hill. Caceres in the backfield again. That's another good sign. Fake it to him. Brown will roll out. Throw it on the run. And complete. Forward progress all the way up to the 20 yard line. That's a generous spot by the refs. That's complete inside the 10. The Bears will have to hurry here. Oh my God, under pressure, throws an interception, and it's gonna be returned all the way back for a touchdown. So Brown trying to get some points before the first, under the first half. Turns a field goal into a touchdown for the other team by throwing a pick six. They had a timeout, he could have took the sack. Got the field goal. So at the half, the Eagles lead the Bears 10 to 3. The Bears will get the ball. That's the one good thing. Just going to bring it out. That might be a terrible decision. It was. Only gets to the 19 yard line. The 
Marcus Harris gets maybe a yard. Nope, nothing. Harris breaks a couple tackles, stays on his feet, gets all the way up near the first down. It's an injury timeout, but it's not Caceres. It's a huge hole for Caceres, but of course he magnetically locks into an eagle safety instead of going to the right like I told him to. It is a goal though because Harris does hit the 1200 yard mark. And there's a completion to Duall for a first down. Bears moving the ball here to start the second half. Oof. <laughs> that looked like a night train lane tackle. Says he was caught, he was dragged down from his neck. Caceres tripped up in the backfield. to Harlan Hill for a first down. And Caceres is brought down in the backfield. 10 carries, 35 yards. He has come back from the injury, but Besides a couple uh, plays where he just breaks four or five tackles, he has not had any room to run. Look at that. Dolphins up 17-0 on the Boston Patriots. It's almost like the Patriots are just not caring about the season anymore. Oh, the slowest spin move ever doesn't work. Stopped at first, but the second effort gets him a first down. Eagles all over that run attempt. Morris has 23 yards now after six carries. Get his feet in bounds. 
I know he had one foot. It, it, the refs are calling it a catch. That's all I care about, unless it's challenged. Caceres will walk it in for a touchdown, and the Bears are an extra point away from tying this thing up. And it's right down the middle, and this game is tied at 10. 2.29 to go in the third quarter. The Eagles and the Bears tied at 10. Okay, 2.25 to go in the third. We are tied at 10. And it's a first down. The Bears have only allowed 75 total yards, but the game is tied at 10 because Brown threw a... Touchdown to the Eagles. And there is another completion, another first down. Somebody's injured on the play. We won't know who it is. Oh, no. Was it Fred Williams? Hope not. There is a sack. They finally get the Van Brocklin. It's Fortunato on the linebacker blitz. Van Brocklin comes through with a nice pass. Another first down. Shoulder. So a lot of aches and pains in this game. Luckily, none of the injuries have been serious. Just a guy missing a quarter, a few series. Barnes now has 22 yards on 10 carries. So Williams only had to take a couple plays off. There's a handoff. Bears give up another couple yards. Third and six. Less than one minute to go in the third. Tie game, 10-10. There's a completion inside the 20. Something was wrong with the Bears defense there. It didn't seem like anyone went to cover the right side of the field. There's a completion for another first down. Twenty seconds left in the third quarter, tied at ten. Huge hole, touchdown Eagles. Offensive line did a great job of pushing 
me and the other defensive line out of the way. Huge hole. Barnes takes it in. And the Eagles, with nine seconds to go in the third quarter, take the lead 16 to 10. Extra point is good. It is 17 to 10. 1960s real life champ, the Eagles, leading Sack to the Futures. NFL or NFC's best team so far, Chicago Bears, 17 to 10. Now the Sack to the Futures best team in the fact that they are 10 and 0 and haven't been scared yet, as well as have number one in almost every offensive category, the Oilers who were the real-life AFL champions. Uh, they will be in action against the Colts. Now, in 1960 real life, of course, the Colts were a very good team in the NFL. The Oilers were arguably the best, and they did win the championship in the AFL. But in this Sack of the Future season, of course, we can't change the divisions or anything, so they are in the same division, and they will be playing their second game against each other this week. comes down to the final quarter. Do the Bears have magic in them like they did last week in the fourth when they came from behind and sent it into overtime? Right, here we go. As Caceres gets picked up and body slammed at the 50-yard line. The face mask will take it all the way down to the 34-yard line. And there's a completion inside the 15-yard line. And that's knocked out of Duall's hands right around the five. Second and ten from the 13 yard line. Caceres will bring it into the end zone for a touchdown. Nice blocking on the play. The Eagles. And the Bears have each hit really nice blocks inside the red zone in the last two drives. Navini puts the extra point through, and we are tied at 17. We were tied at 3. We were tied at 10. Now we're tied at 17. Very even game. Six twenty-one to go. Norm Van Brocklin will lead his Eagles back on the field. The Bears have the definite advantage in total yardage, but it's the turnover advantage that has kept the Eagles in this game. Barnes is up to thirty-four yards running. That's completion tackled right at the first down marker. It is inches short. Here we go now. Three, 
Nice blocking again by the Eagles, opening up a good hole. The Bears are going to have to get off their blocks better. Five and a half to go. Eagles on the move. Tie game. And Norm Van Brocklin gets taken back down back a 12-yard loss on that sack. Complete underneath. Tackled immediately. underneath tackled again that will bring up a fourth down the Bears are giving up the underneath stuff and just coming up and making nice tackles and that's good enough to get the ball out of Van Brocklin's hands although he is the punter as well so it's still in his hands but there he goes he kicks it away breaks one tackle that's it and the Bears will take over at their own 26-yard line. Tie game. Tackled in the backfield. Nice play. Casera 72 yards. He does have the two touchdown runs. Hill gets the first down on that reception. He has 93 yards on the day. Caceres gets held up at the line. Gain of two. Saris gets held up and tackled by the help. Gain of a couple more. Third and three coming up. Less than three minutes to go now. gets just enough for a first down. Bounces off the line, goes back left, doesn't get much though. And that is the two minute warning. Tie game here in Philadelphia. Bears 17, Eagles 17. Saris Powers is way up near a first down. It's going to be a yard short. <laughs> 
Caceres makes one man miss and gets himself up to the 31 yard line. Timeout Eagles. There's a huge hole, 20, 10, touchdown, Rick Caceres. Beautiful blocking by the Bears. <laughs> kind of wonder if the Eagles were not really trying to bring him down. It's a little bit further out still, but sometimes a coach will look at the situation and realize that we can't really stop them. But they can take the clock down and kick a field goal at the last second. So let's just go ahead and give him the touchdown and see if our MVP caliber quarterback, Norm Van Brocklin, can bring us back in the last minute. That's what the decision was. And now we'll see if Van Brocklin can answer or if the Bears defense will seal the deal. One twenty-three to go. Van Brocklin's got to go 75 yards. He does have two timeouts. And they will run the ball to start the drive. He does get five yards. And now Van Brocklin shows some urgency. Gets him to the line. Here we go. And the throw is too far in front of his receiver. And this is a huge third down and five right here. Bears have started off playing coverage. I wonder if they will send the blitz at some point. That's another completion, and they're up across the 40. Here comes the hurry up. There we go. Morris gets to him and sacks him. There's a completion up near the first down marker. It is a first down for the Eagles. Man, there's a completion all the way down to the 25. Okay, 24 seconds left. There's completion inside the 20, and that is the Eagles' last timeout. Okay, Rock has got to go 17 yards in 18 seconds. <laughs> Excuse me. That's complete underneath, but that's going to take some time off the clock. We're down to 12, 11, 8, 7, 6, 5. When Brocklin spikes it, one more play. Four seconds to go in this game. Bears 24, Eagles 17. Game is on the line here. Will the Bears send the pressure? Play action pass. And intercepted in the end zone. That should seal it for the Bears. Last play of the game. Van Brocklin has to force it. I mean, he had no choice. He had to force it. But the Bears come up with the interception and seal the game 24-17. Bears have been playing close games lately, but they have managed to stay unbeaten. Bears will improve to 11-0. The Eagles drop to a danger spot of 7-4. They're now behind the Lions. Depending what happens in the Packers game, the Eagles may be out of the playoffs. There you see Caceres taking it up the middle for a touchdown.
here's Brown or Barnes with his great uh, blocking as well. There's the pick six that ended the first half. Made the game closer than it needed to be. There's Caceres kind of being let into the end zone late in the fourth. And there you see the Bears won in every statistic except for the turnovers, and that's what made it a close game. But the Bears overcome their turnover problems and win 24-17, 11-0. Uh, again, the Cowboys game is also complete, but you can always look at the replay on the Brian Feltz channel. And then, coming up in the next few days, you'll see the Bills in action against the uh, Dallas Texans, who are, of course, shown in Madden. Uh, 18 as the Kansas City Chiefs. That is a game of two six and four teams, so that has playoff implications in it. Of course, the Colts and Oilers, all kinds of good news there. If the Oilers win, they basically clinch that division and uh, come closer to clinching home field throughout the playoffs. If the Colts win, the division is not necessarily over yet, and the Colts become very close to clinching a playoff spot. So a very important game from both sides. And then, of course, the Cleveland Browns and Denver Broncos are also in action. Broncos right here. The Browns, of course, on the Brian Feltz channel. For everyone that watched, thanks for watching. Have a good night, and uh, keep keep tuning in to Sack of the Future Games. There's usually a game every other day at minimum. Thanks. Have a good night. Bye.